Don't you just love him? Don't you just love him? Woo! What a wonderful God. I trust you've been worshiping him, meeting with him, getting filled with his presence, filled with his spirit. Amen. Made brand new, strengthened, empowered, healed, delivered, victorious. Glory and amen in the house of the Lord this morning. Please take a seat. Thank you very much, their worship team. God is good. The devil is bad. We are happy and he is sad. Hallelujah. I trust you're happy. Turn to the person beside you this morning. Check that they've got a smile on their dial. Tell them how good looking they are. I just want to uh, thank everybody that uh, came out yesterday morning and uh, joined in uh, the um, Pro Israel. Get behind, uh, get them home is the way to stop the war. Get them home is the way to stop the war. That's the hostages. Get the hostages home today and the war stops. Oh, that's a bit. Oh, you didn't know it was participation. Get the hostages home today and the war stops. Easy, eh? Not very hard. Anyway, so thank you very much for all those that came. Um, also, um, let me see, what have I got here? Oh, yeah, that was, we had a couple of great victories during the week. Um, our, we had a protest in um, Rotorua and Gisborne. And uh, it stopped the um, transvestites reading stories and gyrating in front of children of our nation. And that's a great victory. I, don't, I cannot believe it. I think, what the hell is going on inside parents' heads that would take their children to sit in front of a transvestite man who's gyrating his bits and pieces while he's reading the story to them, and often they finish up, anybody wants to become a transvestite when they're older, and these little kids put their hands up, of course. They have no idea. Let them play with their trucks. Let them play with their dolls. Forget about trying to sexualize them at such a young age. I think it's just absolutely disgusting. But I praise God, there's, God has found a people that will stand up and speak up on behalf of the children who can't speak for themselves, and the parents are who too dumb. Anyway, hallelujah. So um, who won anybody to the Lord? Anybody win somebody to the Lord? Ruthie, Muzz. And I think we had um, Dells won, I think, 14 family members uh, gave their lives to the Lord because she put the salvation prayer up on her Facebook page. 14 family members up and down the country gave their lives to Christ. That's what I'm talking about. That's what God wants us to do and be involved in. Amen. He wants us to lead people into living, loving, powerful, victorious, woo, brand new relationship with God Almighty. So uh, get, get, get busy doing the do's and you won't have time to do the don'ts. And uh, with the do's comes lots of rewards. So we're looking at plugged into power this morning. And if you're a firstborn, you will be plugged into the power. If you're not plugged into the power, you're not the firstborn. You're not a firstborn. So you've got to be plugged into power. And that's what we're looking at here this morning. To be a firstborn, you must be plugged in to the power. You can't get electricity out of something that's not plugged in and switched on. Anybody switched on this morning? Switched on by Christ. Switched on by the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, you know, as, as I... Um, and I'm sure you're aware of people in the West always seems to be on the move. Always, you know, and, and often kids, they finish college or university and then they want to do their OE. Like it's, their life is determined by their OE. And uh, so many in the West are doing this continually moving around the globe or moving around from city to city or Island to island, and there's this continual movement happening in people's lives. Uh, I had a couple of family friends uh, who have yet have gone on, and, and uh, the wife has gone on to be with the Lord. I don't know what the husband did, 
with Christ, but she went on to be with the Lord. But um, they used to live in Christchurch, and they raised their family in Christchurch, and uh, then and then they moved up here, and that cost them twenty thousand dollars to move up here. As you know, they brought all their belongings and bits and pieces. This older couple, and uh, they were up here for quite a while, but then they started to really miss their children. Let's move back home to be with our kids. And so they did. They moved back home, another 20 grand. Um, and then they were down there, I don't know for how long, and they decided, nah, Nelson's the place. It's got this beautiful sunshine and rivers and lakes and beautiful beaches and mountains. Let's, let's move back up to Nelson. So they did, another 20 grand. And uh, so, you know, it costs a lot. And that's just looking at the financial cost of moving. But there's whole lots more. There's huge relational costs. There's huge spiritual costs. There's all sorts of costs you wouldn't consider or comprehend uh, by moving around. And, and none more so than, than Christians who move from church to church. Um, things are going bad or things are not going as good as what they hope. And they think, Hey, the church down the road, that looks, they, they look like they're, that's a happening place. Let's go on down there. So they uproot themselves, and off they go. And they go move to, from church to church, and um, never, ever growing, never, ever getting their breakthrough, never, ever becoming in the fullness of what God has got for them. Praise God, not in destiny. Amen? Planted, planted, and doing very well. Thank you very much. Amen? Hallelujah, and that's what we're looking at here this morning. Um, Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. You've got to be careful of your friends. You've got to be careful of those who you hang with. You become like you who you hang with. So make sure you hang with people that are on fire for Christ, and you'll tell You'll, you'll easily tell if they're on fire for Christ by the sort of words that are coming from their mouth. If, they're, if their words are exalting Christ and, and, and honoring Him, and if their words are building the house of the Lord, then that person's on fire for Christ. If they're full of self, if they're full of anger, if they're full of negativity, if they're full of criticism, Run! Get away from such a person. It's okay to be those things when you're a young Christian, but after two or three years, you should be getting free from that horrible junk. Amen? Hang with people that are positive. Hang with people that are on fire for Christ. And you can't go too far wrong, I guarantee. So Satan came in amongst the sons of God into the presence of the Lord. In verse 7, and the Lord said to Satan, where do you come from? And so Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. That's a lot of people's lives are like that. Going to and then all of a sudden fro and then back and then returning, just aimlessly wandering around, hoping, 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 hoping that it's all going to work out. The grass is always greener on the other fence. Battling with once-itis. Once I go to that place, it's all going to work out. Once I move to that country, I'll get my breakthroughs. Once I do this, don't get rid of that once-itis. You've got to be content in your relationship with Christ today. Doesn't matter what your situation may be, God is greater than your situation. You can be content in your relationship with Christ today. And that's the key of great success right there. Contentment with godliness is great gain, God says in His Word. You've got to be content. You've got to train yourself to be content. Be a thankful person. Train yourself to be thankful for every little thing, for every big thing. For every little problem, for every big problem, thank God. Thank God for giving you the strength and the wisdom to make it work for you and to get through it all. Do I hear an amen? That's a good word for somebody right there. Genesis 3.14 talks about that, that the curse of Satan or the curse that God pronounced on Satan is that he would 
uh, wander on his belly and crawl on his belly all the days of his life. And in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43, Christ sees, uh, says in that passage that when demons are cast out, they wander through dry places. So that's the curse of Satan, always wandering, never, ever finding home. But God wants you and I to know that home is here. The house of the Lord is God's home for you. That was a pathetic response. I said, the house of the Lord is your home. That's a little bit better. Some of you guys, you meet your wives here. Some of you wives meet your husbands here. Some of you guys and girls, your children are suicidal, but they are no longer because you got planted in the house of the Lord. Some of you guys and girls were suicidal before you came into the house of the Lord, and now you're no longer suicidal. Hello? Some of you guys were going to go to prison, but now you found your way to the house of the Lord, and now, longer, now you're off that road of being a criminal and an inmate. You've got to give some praise to God. Amen? A lot of you people were sick and busted and disgusted, but God has healed you, restored you, and set you free in His house. This is a beautiful place. This place is full of the riches of God, if you're spiritual enough to catch it. Hello? So let's move on. Um, so the curse of Satan is endless wandering, chasing the world. And many believers still do it. Many believers still do it. James chapter 4, 13 to 16. No need to turn there. We'll just quickly go through a couple of these verses. James 4, 13 to 16 says, people, some people say, I'm going to go to this city, I'm going to go to that city and do such and such and such and such. God says, all such boasting is evil. Did you hear me? God says, all such boasting is evil to say, I'm going to go to this city and go to that city. He says, what we should rather say, if it is the Lord's will, I'll go to that city or this city and do such and such and such and such. If it's God's will, that's a good prayer to pray. Even Paul, when he wanted to go and strengthen some young churches and some new Christians, he was on his way to Macedonia to strengthen them, but it says the Holy Spirit stopped him. Because it wasn't what God wanted him to do. God, we've got to be led by God. May, may we never be found doing something that God doesn't want us to do. And one of the gravest mistakes you can ever make is moving churches that God doesn't want you to move into. We think, oh, well, it's another church. It's okay. No, it's not okay. God has got specific places that he wants to plant us in. God is the one who plants us in his church. You don't church, you don't choose Destiny Church Nelson because it's got a great youth group and it has. You don't choose Destiny Church Nelson because it's got a great worship team and it has. You choose your planting because that's where God wants to plant you and I. God's will be done in our lives. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10, let's read this. But may the God of all grace who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, say suffered a while. Now, none of us have put out, none of us have signed up for that. But the reality, it's going to come our way. Whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, whether you're in the house of the Lord or outside of the house of the Lord, we're going to have some suffering. Who knows what I'm talking about? Give me a wave this morning. Don't be frightened of the suffering. Just handle it well in Christ. You handle the suffering or the suffering will handle you. If you handle the suffering in God and in Christ, it can work out for you. But if you are handled by the suffering, it will break you and destroy you. By the Spirit of God and by the Word of God, we can handle every bit of suffering that comes our way. And if you read your Bible, you'll find out some of the great men and women of God suffered greatly, but they broke through and they came out the other side shining brighter than they ever were before they started to suffer. Anybody know what I'm talking about here this morning? So let's carry on reading. After you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. See, there's some great things that comes through the pathway of suffering. 
This is what comes through the pathway, pathway of suffering. After you have suffered a little while, God will perfect, perfect you. He will establish you. Say establish. He will strengthen you and settle you. Say settle. God wants to establish and settle us. And amongst those other things to be perfected and strengthened through our suffering. God wants to, to establish and settle us. It's getting rid of that, that having to wander thing. There's, there's this drive in us, and it comes from the pit of hell. It's part of the curse of Satan that we, we can't be happy here. We must move. I don't know why I must move, but I must move. And so we move. And the cost of that moving is huge on our eternity. Huge in our, on our life here. Huge costs to be paid in our life here. Don't do it to yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. There's purpose in our pain. If you're taking notes, take down Acts 17 and verse 28. God says there right there that God chooses the set times and the exact places. Do you hear that? God chooses the set times and the exact places for us. Say, God's got my time in his hand. God's got the perfect place for me. The perfect place that God has got for you and I is planted. Planted, established, settled in the house of the Lord. When it's going good and when it's going bad. When we're happy and when we're sad. When we're prospering and when we're not. When we get that job and we get redundant. When we get married and we get divorced. We are happy because we're planted. We're blessed because we're planted. We're established and settled. Doesn't matter what rubbish we go through. We're planted and so we know it's going to work for us. Hallelujah. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. It's not talking about plants. If you have a look at the passage of Scripture that this verse is in, this uh, verse is not talking about plants. It's talking about people. Okay? You got that? But he answered and said, Every person which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. So God is the one who plants people. God plants people. Hello? Say, God planted me in Destiny Church Nelson. And that's why I'm going so well. Because I'm planted in Destiny Church Nelson, where God planted me. That's the one. See, um, Acts 2.47, God, uh, God says there, uh, He adds to His church. God adds to His church. Hello? So th the word add basically is another word of planting. Add to His church. In John uh, chapter 15, 4 to 5, it talks about there that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches grafted in to the vine. And in Romans eleven seventeen, it talks about Israel being the natural branch and we are the unnatural or the wild branch that is grafted in. Don't boast against Israel lest you be cut out of the vine and tossed away. Hello? They are going, God is going to regraft them in. God is going to reestablish them uh, in, in, in a remnant, which is the tail end. Uh, it talks of, I think in Romans chapter 9, a remnant of Israel will be saved. But in Romans 11, it talks about all Israel will be saved. All Israel in the end days will come to know their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, as their personal Lord, Savior, King, and God. Amen. There's going to be a huge move of God around the planet when that takes place. And you and I hope to be part of it. Amen? Hallelujah. Just stay planted. But let's, let's have a look at our main text this morning in Psalm chapter 92 and verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish 
in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Woohoo! Amen. So, it, that word flourish appears in every single one of those verses. There's three verses, and the word flourish appears in every single one of those verses. Say flourish. That is a beautiful word. Let's just kind of break it down. I've got some meanings of the word flourish because it uh, sometimes can be a little bit hard to get our little heads around. What does that mean to flourish spiritually in every area of our lives? It means to thrive. Say thrive. It means to be in prime condition. Woo! Got some beautiful ladies in the house this morning. Got some studs in prime condition. Amen. Say, I'm in prime condition. Turn to the person beside you this morning, give them a high five and say, you look like you're in prime condition. Prime condition. Say prime condition. Another word for, uh, for flourishing is being successful, prospering, growing luxuriantly. Peak condition, healthy. Woo! Just to name some, just to name some of them. Anybody want to flourish? Anybody want to flourish in the house of the Lord? Flourish in every area of your life. Hallelujah! Because it says here, um, they shall flourish in the in verse thirteen. They shall flourish in the courts. It doesn't say court. Courts, plural. It means many areas of our lives. In fact, it means to flourish in absolutely every area of your life. God wants you to do all those things, to thrive, to be in prime condition, peak condition, healthy, prosperous, grow luxuriantly in every area of your life. There's not an area of your life that God does not want you and I to flourish in and do extremely well in. Give Him some praise right there. That's God's will for our life, but it can only be received when we're planted. So for the Christians that are always moving around and not planted, you cannot flourish. You will not flourish because you're on the move when God wants to plant you. You didn't ask Him where you could just move. You just got up and moved. I'm staggered how many Christians make major decisions for their lives without ever consulting their God, their Lord, and their boss, and their Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, is this your will for my life? Because I'm not going to do it if it's not. I want to do your will. So I reap maximum benefits. And one of his benefits is being planted in his house and flourishing and doing excellently well in every area of my life. Thank you very much. Amen. Are you doing well? Are you doing well? Are you doing well in absolutely area, every area of your life? Some areas of your life aren't going so well because God's at, at, at work in that area of your life. So you might be going through some uncomfortableness in a particular area of your life or discomfort or you might be having some pain, experiencing some pain. It's called growth pains. God's growing you. Say, God's growing me. And if you're going through some uncomfortability in certain areas of your life, it's because God's wanting to set you free from that which the enemy means to rip you off by. When God removes things from our lives, it's for our benefit. It's not that He's a party pooper. He's got our best always in mind. His plans for us are to give us a beautiful, bright future and a great hope, full of life and all its abundance. Amen. Amen. Say, God wants me to have abundance of all things. Give Him a praise if you believe what I'm saying here this morning. That's what God says in His Word. He's come to give us life and all its abundance. But there's so few Christians that are experiencing that on a daily basis. Often because we're so caught up in the temporary we're ignoring the eternal at our detriment and at our loss. God wants us to be spiritually minded, not carnally minded. 
It means to be focused on the eternal realm, the unseen realm, the spirit realm. That is the foundation and the basis of your life. Hello. But often we're so caught up on the carnality and our carnal thinking, we always, we're going through problems and we always look to the temporary for the answers often to eternal problems. And God wants you and I to be men and women of the Word of God, be men and women of prayer, enjoying a relationship with Him. But when we hit problems, we know what it is to pray the effective prayer of a righteous person, which avails much. Amen? Deal with your problems and your issues from a spiritual basis, from an eternal basis, and you watch things change. You watch, you, you watch yourself get victory. You watch yourself starting to flourish. You watch yourself starting to have great breakthroughs. Those things you battle with for years, and the devil says, you've had this for years, and you will have it for the rest of your life, is a lie from the pit of hell. My God says, no, I am greater than Satan. I'm greater than your sin, and my future for you is bright. It is full of life. It is full of victory. It is full of prosperity. It is full of health. Do I have any winners in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Flourish like a palm tree. It's interesting, in, in verse, verse 7, it talks about the wicked are like grass. So here's the righteous flourishing like palm trees and growing like a cedar in Lebanon, but the wicked are like grass. They grow in a day and they're gone the next day. So temporary. But the righteous are eternal. The temporary, they experience pleasures of sin for a season, fleeting seasons. The wicked, they live for the weekend, and they waste their weeks. They waste five days a week hanging out for the weekend, two days. So they throw away five for two. They look forward to the holidays, so they waste a whole year looking forward to the holidays. They throw away a whole year waiting for the holidays. The wicked live for temporary pleasure. The righteous experience eternal pleasure every day of their life. I do not live for the weekend. I do not live for holidays. My life is a holiday. My, my life is a weekend. My life is a celebration. I'm having a party 24-7. I do not have, I never ever have a bad day. You might think that's false, but it is not. That is my chosen reality. I have chosen never to have a bad day. I can go through hell, but I'm still smiling because the joy of the Lord is still in resonance because the, the storms of life do not take away the presence of God out of my life. In fact, the storms of God, I use the storms of God now to strengthen my walk in the Lord. So I never have a bad day. Stop choosing to have a bad day. Stop choosing to throw away five for two. Live for seven. Abundant life, seven days a week. That's what God wants to bless you and I with. Stop looking to the world. Stop look, looking for sinful pleasures to be your solution and to give you life. You're not going to find life in temporary sinful pleasures. You will only ever find death. There are too many people and too many believers killing themselves for the sinful pleasures of a season. When God wants us to flourish and have abundance of all things seven days a week, enjoying life, enjoying this abundance, enjoying flourishing that God has called you and I to, Woo! Give the person beside you a high five this morning and say, God has called you to flourish. Turn to the person on the other side of you, give them a high five and say, God has called you to abundant living. Hallelujah. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. At our stand yesterday, we had Catherine and Allison and Betty, mighty woman, mighty woman, mighty woman, still bearing fruit in their old age, fresh and flourishing, 
Woohoo! Yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, taking it to the enemy. Sticking it to the enemy. I'm not talking about the pro-Palestinian people. I'm talking about the demons that were behind them. And are trying to set up, set up an evil stronghold in the city. I don't know if you uh, read uh, Apostle's tweet. Uh, talking about some Palestinians. I'll just share the little tweet. Share the story. To give you a bit of an example of the sort of demon spirit that we are stopping from establishing itself in our city, in our region. So this young teenage boy was accused, not found, he was accused of speaking to Israelis. And so his twin brother and his father and brothers and members of his community took him into the town square and kicked the living daylights out of him. And as he lay bleeding and dying, they spat on him and cursed him and then cut off his head. A teenage boy. And that's the demon spirit that I am opposing with everything in me. You can arrest me, you can throw me in jail, but I will be there and I will stop that demon spirit establishing itself in my territory. This is my territory. I have fought and I have earned the right to say this is my territory. And you're not coming into my territory and taking over my territory and establishing a stronghold on my territory of that antichrist demon of violence and murder. I stand against you. I will fight you every step of the way. I am not fighting people, but I will fight the demons that influence them. You're not getting a victory on my watch, baby. I've been around too long. Pastoring since 1990. I was a youth leader for four and a half years before that. I've been walking with the Lord since 1981. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but I've got lots of scars to show you that have been around the place. And I've got lots of victories. I've got lots of notches on my belt showing you all the victories that I've had. I can tell you some stories that would make your hair curl. I would tell you some stories that would lift you into a dimension you could not think possible. I fought hard, and I've worked hard, and I'm not giving up easy. And I encourage you, saints, do not give up easy. And do not look at situations like this through carnal eyes and read the newspaper and believe the lies that they say against the apple of God's eye, the children of Israel. God gave Israel that land over 3,000 years ago. It is not the Palestinians, never ever was. It belongs to Israel. But it's not about the land. The Palestinians and the Hamas and Hutus and Hezbollah want the eradication. They want the complete annihilation. They want the genocide of the Israeli people. It was a Hamas started this story and this, this war, and it will be Israel that finishes it. But the Palestinians just need to deliver the hostages and it would stop. Anyway, let's move on. Hallelujah. So, um, flourishing like a palm tree. Say flourishing like a palm tree. Don't you just love palm trees? They're the most beautiful tree. But growing like a cedar tree. Say growing like a cedar tree. And you'll notice in this passage, it talks about flourishing like a palm tree first and growing like a cedar tree second. If you're not flourishing like a palm tree, you can't grow as a cedar tree. If you're not flourishing, you'll never ever grow. If you're not flourishing, if you're still struggling, always struggling, never flourishing, you're not growing. Your, your, your perpetual struggling is showing you that you're not growing. Hello? Too many believers, they, they go around the mountain, as it were, and they hit the same problem, and they blame somebody else. And then they go back around the mountain again, six months, nine months, a year, 18 months, two years, around the mountain, boom, back at the same major problem, blame somebody else. Back around the mountain they go, six months, one year, 18 months, two years, three years around the mountain. My goodness, how long are you going to wander in the wilderness, bang, against the same problem? If you are, if you are con being confronted by the same problem regularly, it's because God is wanting you to conquer it. 
God is wanting you to conquer it. If you're hitting the same problems, it's because God is trying to help you get the victory over it. And you'll never get the victory over it if you don't get the victory through it. You can't avoid the problem and beat the problem. You can't, avoid, you can't overcome your fears if you try and ignore your fears. You're, you ignoring your fears or ignoring your problems will only strengthen your problems, will only strengthen your fears. Do you hear me? You, you cannot conquer what you will not confront. You've got to confront your problems by the Spirit of God and with the Word of God and with the saints of God. Amen. Praise God for Man Up Legacy, Boys Men Diamonds, Youth Nation, all these other groups. They're full of people that are anointed by God to help you get your breakthrough. So you'll do very well in life. Oh, I tell you what, we've got some great testimonies of marriages that have been turned around, people that are flourishing in their marriages, of, of parenting that's been turned around. Once upon a time, they were abusive parents. Now their parenting is fantastic. Once upon a time, they were, uh, they were addicted to meth for years. Now they haven't, taste, they haven't done drugs for years. And they're eternally happy, flourishing, full of abundant life. Once upon a time, they were always on the bottle, alcoholics. Now they never, ever touch a drink. And they've never been so happy and so full of joy. Why? Because they're in these groups and they're unpacking the damage that was done to them. They're unpacking the damage they did to themselves. And they're getting freedom, eternal freedom, uh, internal freedom, which is eternal freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. Change for the better. Flourishing, happy, victorious, full of abundant life. That's what Christ wants for us. Do I hear an amen? So, um, you can't grow if you're not flourishing. Growing is part of flourishing. The cedars are known as the kingly among the trees. Cedar trees are known as kingly among the trees. They're not aged in years. They're aged in centuries. How many centuries is that tree? Not how many years old is that tree. How many centuries old is that tree? And, and the righteous, those that are planted, will grow like a cedar, strong. So I'm going to continue to grow for all eternity. Beautiful. I, I was once destined to burn for eternity. Then I met Christ, and he saved me. Now I'm going to grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from power to power, like a cedar tree. I'm, I'm going to be around for 100 million years plus, flourishing with abundance, Poor people that don't know Christ are going to burn for 100 million years plus. You've got to stay in Christ. If you're not in Christ this morning, we're going to give you a fantastic opportunity where you can make peace with Christ and escape the fires of hell, but brought into a positive place of flourishing and growing as a cedar tree, doing very well in every area of your life. Woohoo! Give God some praise if you believe what I'm talking about here this morning. I'll drink to that. Solomon's temple was built with cedars, cedar trees. Solomon's temple was the first temple that was built for our great God, built of cedar. And his, uh, his house now is being built with living stones, cedar trees, the righteous growing strong cedar trees. But let's have a look at palm trees. That's what I want to flourish on. Here. Uh, look at here this morning about the flourishing factor. Say the flourishing factor. Palm trees are tall and stately. They're called the queen or prince of trees. They're a picture of beauty and often stand in deserts, places of death. But right in the middle of the place of death, they're standing tall and stately and green and flourishing. Woohoo! And they've got they got um, they got this uh, beautiful sweet dates on, in the branches. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's us. That's a picture of resurrection life right there, standing in a place of death but flourishing and producing great fruit, sweet fruit. Amen. Woohoo! Do I have anybody in the house that's flourishing this morning? Yeah. 
Give him some praise of you flourishing this morning. Jesus. Oh, some of us have just started. You haven't arrived. You're on a journey. The flourishing only ever gets better and better and better. More and more and more. The abundance doesn't come and stay at that stage. The abundance comes and increases. Amen? So I'm always looking for more from Christ. I'm always looking to become more like Him. I'm always looking to become more powerful and more victorious, more healthy, more wealthy. Amen? More victorious. I trust you are the same. You might be flourishing this morning, but God has got so much more flourishing for you. Say, God's got more in store. Give Him some praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. A picture of resurrection. That's a palm tree. You can bend in the biggest storms. You can throw the biggest storms at palm trees, and they will bend over in the storm, and they will just about touch the ground. Palm trees can bend. Pliable, not starchy and stiff and negative and grisly and whingy. No, full of praise and full of positivity, full of thanksgiving. Bending in the storms, not grizzling about the storms. Don't curse, don't curse your, your prosperity by cursing the storms that you go through. Too many of us speak too negatively about the problems that we face when God has actually given us the problems to cause us to flourish through. It's gone quiet. Let's, let's go, when it goes quiet like that, it means God, I've got to stop there and labor a bit more there because you didn't like what you heard. That's why you went quiet. So too many of you are grizzling. Most of you are grizzling about when you go through problems. You're too quick to blame everybody else and never expect, uh, never accept responsibility for your crisis. Stop blaming people for your situation. That is a, a behavior of children. Can I be real? That's a behavior of children that you go through a problem and you'll blame somebody else for it. That's a behavior of children. God wants you and I to grow up. God wants you to grow, you and I to grow up as spiritual sons and daughters of God, that we will own my storm, that I will own my problem, that I will stop blaming mummy and daddy for my problem, that I will stop blaming my teachers for my problems. I've been haven't been in school for decades. What good is it me gonna do, do me blaming my teachers now? My mum and dad are in the grave. What good is it going to do me now to blame my mummy and my daddy for my problems today? I'm an adult. Adults accept your problems as yours because I know it, they're not anybody else's. Yes, you might not have been the cause of your problems, but now it's your responsibility to deal with your problems. I'll say that again. You might not have been the cause of your problems, but it's your responsibility to deal with your problems now as an adult. That's a behavior of an adult. So when a storm hits, you don't curse it because it's your growth point. Remember? You remember? I'll, re I'll read it again. Some of you have forgotten. After you've suffered a while, God will perfect. He will establish you. He will strengthen you. He will settle you. Stop cursing your blessing. Many blessings, not all blessings, but many blessings come through storms. Stop being so negative. Stop being so self-pitying. Be thankful. I've been to some of the most poorest countries in the world. There's no poverty in New Zealand. Did you hear me? There is no poverty in New Zealand, because we have the social welfare system. You might complain about the, the, the small amount of money you get from that social welfare system. Wrong thing. Stop cursing your blessing. You be thankful for the welfare. Most nations do not have the welfare system. There is no poverty in New Zealand because I've been to some of those poorest countries and I have seen poverty firsthand. I've seen people starving on, the fo on footpaths to death. I've seen people not able to, to pay 
doctors to help them. And they're lying in dirt, riddled with cancer, and cancer's weeping out of their faces. Huge, big cancerous growths out of their faces, and they cannot afford a doctor. We have got no right to grizzle or complain. But we have every responsibility to be thankful and praise our great God for causing us to be born in a country with such abundance and such blessing that we will look up. Too many people are ripping the system off. Too many people are ripping the system off. Too many people are lazy in New Zealand. Too many of the younger generation are lazy and are not working and claiming the benefit like it's their right. It's not your right to get my taxpayer money. It's not your right to get my hard-earned taxpayer's money for you to sit on your bum and do nothing with. God, My God says, if you don't work, you don't eat. My God says, if you don't work, you starve. A lot of you guys and girls that are getting some sort of benefit, you could work if you wanted to, but you're too lazy. Firstborns are not lazy. Only cursed people are lazy. Cursed people are lazy. Woo! Blessed people are hard workers. Blessed people are, are joyful. Blessed people are prosperous. Blessed people are positive. Blessed people are full of praise. Amen. Stop looking at what you haven't got and look what you have got. I am born in this beautiful nation. Thank you, Father. I'm born in the best city in this beautiful nation. Thank you, Lord. I've got beaches. I've got rivers. I've got lakes. I've got mountains. I've got so much beauty surrounding me. I've got my health. I've got a roof over my head. I've got food in my tummy. Praise you, Lord. That's all I need. As long as I've got a relationship with you, I am doing very well. Thank you very much. Amen. Your whole situation can change when your mind changes from negativity to positivity. Your whole situation will change. Everything in your life will change if you change your negative thinking to positive thinking and start being thankful for what you've got and stop focusing on what you haven't got. Amen. So, um, Palm trees, their age is uh, measured in 100 plus years. Not so much centuries like the cedar tree, but 100 plus years. Most palm trees, if if allowed to, they will grow way older than 100 years old. There's there's longevity in being planted. There's longevity in being planted. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, The Holy of Holies in... in, in, uh, Solomon's temple, remember we just looked at the cedar tree, was built. Solomon's temple was built with cedar trees. But all the internal walls of the, of the Holy of Holies were, was carved with palm trees. So, so the, the Solomon's temple was built with cedar trees, but in the interior of the Holy of Holies, all these palm trees were, were carved into its walls. And God says that we will flourish as a palm tree and grow as a cedar tree. Amen. The Holy of Holies is is a a type and a picture of our relationship with Christ. Amen. The house of the Lord being built with living stones, as I've already shared. Thank you, Father. There's um, there's, there's great health benefits, and we're going to have a a little bit of a, a look at that. But here's how you know if you're planted, okay? Some practical measurements so you can, you're at, you're at most Sunday services. You hardly miss a Sunday service. You don't look for excuses to miss a Sunday service. You look for excuses to get there. When everybody else is trying to stop you, you look for excuses to get to the house of the Lord. You're in midweek groups as well. You bring your tithes and you give offerings. That's how you know you're planted. You've got great attitude, thankful attitude towards the leaders of your church. That's how you know you're planted. If you're planted, you'll flourish. If you're not planted, you can't flourish. And I know some of you guys and girls are new, and that's okay. God's grace is sufficient. Just keep on coming here every Sunday. Keep on going, keep on turning up at your midweek group. You might not have all these things in place. That's okay. You'll grow. You know how you you know if you're planted if you're serving. So 
all planted people are this. Uh, they're, at, they're at Sunday meetings and midweek meetings regularly. They're at, they bring their tithes and offerings, and they serve, and they've got great attitudes towards their church leaders. They tell you, you know, you're planted. If you haven't got that, you might have been still visiting. You might have been coming along here for 30 to 40 years, but you haven't got those things. You're still visiting. You're not planted. And if you're not planted, you're not flourishing. I think the lights are coming on in some people's minds and hearts right now, and you don't like it. You don't like me saying such things, but I've got to be real. I've got to be honest. I've got to be truthful with you. If some of those things are not in your life, you're not planted, and no wonder you're struggling. No wonder you're not, not very happy. It's because you're not planted. But planting has got more to do with an attitude of our heart. Planting has got more to do with an attitude of our heart. And when those things are evident in our lives, we are planted and we are flourishing. If those things are not evident in our lives, we're not planted and we're struggling. Do something about it. You've got the power to choose. You've got the power to change from struggling to flourishing. It's all got to do with your heart. Amen. So let's, let's have a look at some of the health benefits. And this is based on studies done by Duke and Indiana University in the States, Michigan, uh, Michigan uh, Center of D Disease Control, Barnia Research Group, and the National Institute for Healthcare Research. Those that are planted, this is what these um, institutions have come up with. Those that are planted, you increase your life expectancy on average by eight years. Those that are planted... You increase your life expectancy by eight years. If you're not planted, you shorten your life expectancy by eight years. Second thing, there's a huge reduction in, in uh, alcohol and drugs in those that are planted. There's a dramatic lower of suicide numbers. There's, less, uh, there's a less risk of depression and a quicker recovery, 70% quicker recovery from depression. You're 40% less likely to have high blood pressure. So the heart disease and emphysema and cancers, the risk of death of these things is lower by 50%. 50%. There are huge benefits. We're just looking at the health benefits, but there's huge benefits spiritually, there's huge benefits relationally. There's huge benefit educationally. There's huge benefits financially. Every area of our lives, God wants us to do well and to flourish in. There's a re reduced risk of getting strokes, having strokes, diabetes, and respiratory diseases. There's four times less likely to cause death if you're planted. Hospital stays are reduced by 50% for those that are planted. We rebuke all illnesses in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord, that we are healed by your wounds. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Hallelujah. Physical healing is a huge part of God's heart for us. Um, we had communion last week. The juice represents his shed blood that forgives us and cleanses us and sets us free from the power of sin. But his, that little bit of bread represents his broken body. That by his wounds we are healed and made completely whole. God wants your body to be around and energized by his power for decades so you can serve him well. Shorten your life by not serving him. Lengthen your life by serving him. It says of Caleb that God kept him alive. Why? Because he was so valuable so needful for the economy of God that God kept him alive. He should have died a whole lot before, a whole lot sooner, but no, God kept him alive because he was so valuable. Some of the ways that you guys and girls are choosing to live on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis, you are making yourselves either valuable to God or not so. What are you doing with your life? I trust you're sowing it into the kingdom of God. I mean, reaching out to bless others, 
Not so worried about your own needs, but focusing on the needs of those around about you and doing everything you can by God's glory to help those in need round about you. Make yourself so valuable to God that He will keep you alive. He did it for Caleb, and He can do it for you. Say, He did it for Caleb, and He can do it for me. Some of you teenagers don't know what I'm talking about, but give yourself another couple of decades and you will. 14% less divorce rate. 14%. Should be a whole lot more than that, but I will take it anyway. Greater sexual satisfaction in marriage. Sex is way better in God-given, God-blessed marriages than your immorality that you've ever experienced. With God, when you get married before God and have sex, God's blessing is upon that sex and is way better. The sex in, in a blessed marriage is way better than sex outside of marriage. In the 70s, 80s, planted members of churches earned, on an average, $12,600 a year more than those not planted in the house of the Lord. And over 40 years, that equates to $500,000 more than those not planted. I'm telling you, there's some huge benefits. There's some huge benefits. I trust, I trust you've got this, this greater expectancy after hearing this word this morning. I trust you've got this growing expectancy, this greater expectancy on the inside of you, just how good your life is going to be, how bright your future is. I trust God is lifting your sights and going, wow, you mean if I stay here, if I come along here and I do those things that you said, Pastor, it's going to happen to me more than likely. More than likely. Amen. Get planted and stay planted. Amen. Give God some praise this morning. Don't you just love Him? Woohoo! Can we all be upstanding, please? Father God, thank you, Lord God, for this word. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord God, for anointing me, Lord God, to make this plain and simple. And Lord God, uh, uh, confronting but inspirational at the same time. Father God, uh, of the importance of being planted, such a basic principle, but some, most believers are completely ignorant of it. Thank you, Lord God, for enlightening us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your anointing upon our lives. Lord God, plant us, Lord, we submit ourselves to your will. Lord God, thank you for helping us to get off that that wandering, cursed, curse of Satan trap that too many believers are on. Thank you, Lord God, for planting us and causing us to flourish in every area of our lives. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' wonderful name. Do I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Just while everybody's in attitude of prayer, I'm going to... Um, if you're, if you're a young Christian, new Christian, and this is the first time you've heard about being planted and you want to be planted, I want, you to, I want you to come out of your seats. I want you to come out of your seats, come out the front here. I'm going to pray for you. And if you're, if you're an older Christian and you've never heard um, about planting before or you've heard but you didn't fully understand it and you want to get planted in this in church, quick, 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 come out, come out, come out. Don't let, pray, don't let fear or pride hold you back. Quick, quick, quick. Come out, up the front here, that's the way. Never heard, never. That's right, come, come, come. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Don't let your ego and your pride rip you off. Don't be so dumb. Good on you, ladies. Awesome. Good on you, that's awesome. It's a shame men are so weak on the inside. Men are so weak on the inside. Good on you, Tama. That's a way. But let's hit it. Why are, why are men so weak on the inside? And women can come up, not a problem. Awesome, DJ. Women can come up, not a problem, but guys, that we're, we're, someone might laugh at us or something. And so we, we stay, we hesitate, and we, and we rip ourselves off. We rip God off, and we, and we choose to struggle the rest of our lives. Don't do it to yourself. I want, to give a, I want to give a salvation call to all those that, that want to give their lives to Christ, that you want, to make, you want to make peace with Christ, whether it's for this first time or whether it's you're making a recommitment of your life. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me, Father, 
I'm so sorry for how I've lived. Thank you, Lord, that you love me so much. You came into this world, took my sin, bore the punishment of my sin, bled, suffered, and died, that I would be forgiven and cleansed. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me and cleansing me right now. Fill me with your wonderful Holy Spirit. Cause me, Lord, to be born again. Plant me in this great church and cause me to flourish in every area of my life. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or prayed that prayer as a written commitment, quick, 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 come up and join these folk right here, right now. Come up and join these folk right now. Now, on behalf of my beautiful wife, Sarah, and my behalf of my elders and my senior leaders and man-up leaders and, and legacy leaders and all the other leaders in this church, I'm going to speak to you, guys and girls, and this is our commitment to you. As the leaders of Destiny Church Nelson, we commit ourselves. This is a covenant. We are here day in, day out, week in and week out, month in, month out, year in and year out to see you all flourish and prosper and do very well in absolutely every area of your life. There's, there's not an area of your life that we don't want to see you do well in. We want to see you do well in your relationships, in your marriages, in your families. We want to see you do well in your spirit and your ministries that God's going to lead you into. Uh, God, we want to see you do well in absolute every area of your life. All the man-up leaders and legacy leaders, etc., are here for your benefit. And we commit ourselves to you guys and girls, and, and we, we make a covenant with you and promise to you that we're here for your benefit to help you in whatever way we can. It might mean sometimes that we even have to tell you off. It's not that we don't love you. We have to tell people off because we do love them. If a parent doesn't tell their chitty, kitty off, it's only because uh, the, the parent is frightened of being rejected from their child. But we are filled with the love of God, and we commit ourselves to you to be your friends, to be your brothers and sisters, and to be your helpers in every area of your life. Amen? Now, we want you to make a commitment back on response of our commitment to you as the leaders of Destiny Church Nelson. We want you to make a commitment back to us. And that's just one of saying, I'm going to plant myself here. I'm going to be part of this great church, part of this fellowship, part of the family of God, and I expect to flourish and do exceedingly well in life. Okay? So, so um, repeat after me, Father. I, f I, I promise to remain planted, to get along here every week, to be part of a midweek group, to bring my tithes and offerings, to start to serve in this house and be a blessing to others and to support you, leaders of this church, with whatever way I can. In Jesus' name, amen. That's awesome. I'm going to come along. I'm just going to quickly lay hands on you, and I'm going to part God's anointing and His grace upon your lives that can see you get planted and remain planted. Amen. So I want you to just close your eyes. I want you to raise your hands to the Lord, and uh, you just receive this impartation of God's anointing, His power, and His grace to get planted and remain planted and flourish in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Impartation. 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 Impartation, 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 in Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Welcome to Destiny Church Nelson. Welcome to your planting. Welcome to your flourishing. Welcome to you for a bright future, brighter than what you could ever dream possible. 
God has got such a bright future for you guys and girls, not based on anything that you've been through, but based on the life that was laid down for you, the life of Christ, God's own son. He, he honored God and he never sinned once. And so everything he did, he did for you and I. And so God wants to bless you based upon his life. It's an abundant blessing. So expect, look forward to, and hasten that bright future that God's got for each and every one of you. God bless you all. If you, if you gave your life to Christ, I'd love for you to stay behind. Just want to pray for you and give you a free gift. Other than that, there's hot drinks, hot food, hot fellowship in the cafes, and you've got the child-free cafe upstairs also. God bless you all. Go with Christ and flourish. Stay planted. Thank you.